Oh, are we rolling? We, we're going. <laughs> All right, we're good. Mic check, one, two. All right, how's everyone doing tonight? I'm excited to play for y'all. So Captiva uh, came from McQuaid. Patrick thought of it. Um, it was because we had another name before, which was Salute the Moon, which I thought of that one. Um, but we found out some random ass band in Kentucky had it already. So we were like, all right, we can't do that one. So uh, we changed it up. He thought of Captiva. Captiva is an island in Florida. And our vibe is, is really like just kind of, you know, West Coast, beach, island type of sound. So it, it really fit and uh, matched what we were doing. Captiva started when we were in high school. We were like juniors in high school. And um, I was already doing music myself. I took piano lessons for like eight years and was playing guitar and making music and putting it online. And I moved a, a block away from Jackson and he was just getting into music, really liked it, really driven. And he, uh, he just would start walking over and we would um, start making our own songs and writing our own music and we're having, we were having a ton of fun with it. Those were the best days of, of the band, honestly, at the beginning. And um, we wrote a few songs and played our first show at a charity event and um, yeah, the rest is history. And we got the rest of the members we needed and some have come and gone and now we're here. Yeah, so um, coming up on two years now um, is how long I've been in the band. So one of my really good friends, uh, we played baseball together at KU. He said that, hey, one of my fraternity brothers, Jackson, he has a band, um, and they have a show next Wednesday at the Bowl. And their drummer just quit. They need a drummer. Do you want to, like, essentially audition and whatnot? And I was like, 100%, I want to be a rock star my whole life. So that next day, I DM'd... JJ on Instagram was like, dude, can't wait to jam with you. Skipped all my classes. I'm pretty sure I skipped the baseball practice too. Drove all the way to Overland Park, went to Guitar Center, rented a drum set for like $200 because it was short notice. Drove it all the way back and we ended up practicing in the basement of the Beta House at like 11.30 at night. So we were just making so much noise. And he was like, yeah, let's give it a shot. Like, let's play at the bowl. So ended up playing at the bowl. And I think it just, ever since, they just haven't been able to get rid of me. I just keep showing up, so. My buddy Nick, who I grew up with, was the original bass player. Well, one of the original bass players. And um, once he went to college in Nashville, they didn't really have anyone to pick up the slack. So they asked me, and I was obliged to do it. So it was great. We started back like early 2015, I'd say, or just like our junior year of high school. Um, you know, I had just started like teaching myself how to play guitar, interested in, you know, writing songs and stuff like that. And um, I was at Rockers High School at the time, and Patrick, our guitar player, um, he was already writing songs and releasing them on SoundCloud. And I came across his stuff, and I was like, this is dope, like this is awesome. Like, and I wasn't really good at any instruments at the time. 
And so I was like, you know, I should really link up with this kid and see if he can teach me anything or see if we can um, see if he can help me grow at all with uh, writing songs or playing the guitar or what have you. Yeah, I just went over there. We wrote our first song and jammed, and it's just kind of taken off from there. First song we wrote together was that one day I went over to Patrick's house. We wrote a song called We the Kings. And yes, we still do play it to this day. So make way. Clear the path, make it fast. The rest are young and frightened anyway. There's a few songs that we do together that we write that we that we've written together, which is really the best way for us to write music. That's my favorite way for us to write, which we we don't do enough of to be honest. But usually how it works now is, I'll have a song idea and I'll come to the band, and I'll propose a song idea and then we all kind of put our own flavor into it, um, and vice versa with JJ. JJ will come in with a song, and we'll all just kind of add our own bits here and there, and it'll eventually evolve into into whatever we record and whatever we perform. I grew up hanging out in the Brookside area a lot, hanging around the neighborhood, running around, going to Loose Park with friends, just, you know, causing trouble in Brookside. And um, so I kind of wanted to write a song as sort of a tribute to Brookside and just, you know, kind of representing my, uh, my younger years, my high school years really, uh, growing up and running around Brookside. And it's just really like, you know, it's like just a day drinking, fun song to be listening to outside, you know, so. And if you've ever seen the music video, it really it kind of portrays it in a, in a good way. The book side is something amazing. A six pack, a backpack, blankets. We got the vibes and you get wasted. It's just like me. Brookside, Patrick wrote that one. I wrote my verse with everybody in the band afterwards. The coldest side kids getting witty, chilling in the sun, loose park, Kansas City. Got my girl by my side, blonde hair, looking pretty on my misfit and kids. If you feel it, sing it with me now. Yeah, we just wrote it because we wanted to pay a tribute to places we were hanging out all the time uh, back in high school, which was Brookside area. We had a lot of friends who lived around there, and then Loose Park is right around there. We were always hanging around there. They called us Loose Rats, but uh, yeah, so we just wanted to pay a tribute to the area um, that we live around and hang out in all the time. I'd probably say somebody who I'm very inspired by uh, because I started out with just a guitar and, and writing lyrics, so just kind of a singer-songwriter, acoustic guitar player, so I'd probably have to say like John Mayer is a huge inspiration to me because I mean he's the goat like are you kidding me like this dude released like albums just him and a guitar and the platinum multi-platinum albums and then he goes and tours with the Grateful Dead like that is just like I mean that's the dream right there so I mean John Mayer is, is the goat and he's a huge inspiration to me I'd say Jimmy Page is definitely one of my biggest inspirations growing up um, but I was a huge Strokes fan growing up and Albert Hammond Jr., the lead guitarist of The Strokes, just has like a style to him, the way he plays, and it's, it's rad. And I, I feel like I definitely get a lot of like my performance aspect, um, my, my style on stage, I think, is inspired a lot by Albert Hammond Jr., because he's dope. I don't know, I guess growing up, I was really inspired by Dave Grohl because he was like a multi-instrumentalist, and that's kind of like what I was aspiring to be myself, so. Drums, guitar, bass, all over the board. Yeah. So I am the biggest Led Zeppelin fan of all time. I have a Led Zeppelin tattoo on my leg, actually. Um, so John Bonham has always been an inspiration for me. Um, and then also like more on the jamming side of music, like Carter Beaufort from Dave Matthews Band. He is probably my idol when it comes to just how innovative he is on the drum set. So I would say those two are pretty much the reason why I started drumming. Personally, my favorite one to perform is Smooth Interrogation, because it's tight. We play it, we're tight when we play it. It sounds good. And, uh, and it's just a fun dance, it's just a fun dance song for everybody. So I think everyone really digs it. To perform, I'd probably say Check Your System, 
because it just goes hard, the hardest live, and it's usually our, our last song we play. So we get a we get a nice applause after usually, and uh, can end the set with a banger. I don't really have. I guess I don't really have a favorite song, but my favorite part of a show is probably the end because like that's when we're most like excited to end the show, and like that's like the big song usually, and it's probably a cover most of the time, but yeah. I mean, I love opening the shows with Blondie. I think that it's such like a perfect song for us to get our jitters out and just to rock on to. Um, but other than that, as of late, I've really started to like Chemicals, which is more of like older Captiva. Um, but just like JJ, love jamming out to check your system at the end of the show. So of course I have to create three answers, but if I had to pick one, I would probably say Chemicals. Um, I, I consider myself a professional when it comes to music because I've been, you know, ever, ever since I was trying to learn guitar, I mean, I was trying to learn guitar because I saw, you know, being in a band or making music as a good opportunity to get out and see the world and to connect with other people on, you know, a, almost a spiritual level because like music is, is something spiritual in my eyes and it can make people happy or sad. And I just love connecting in whatever way I can with fans or just anybody listening. And so with that being said, I would consider myself a, a professional because it's a dream of mine to um, make playing music, performing, writing a profession. And um, I'm doing everything I can to make my dreams come true. For me, like I want to consider myself a professional. Like obviously the way we carry ourselves at every single show, I want to be professional. But I think for me, it started out as a hobby and I want nothing more than for it to become a career. Um, so I'm going to be a little conceited and say I want to say I'm a professional, but I'm going to be a little bit more, uh, I'm going to take a step back and say that I'm probably more of a hobbyist than anything. I try to do everything professionally, like whatever I put my mind to, but like it started out as a hobby, so it's just kind of grown from there. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I would say we try to handle ourselves like professional musicians as much as we can. I'd say the amount of time we put into it probably isn't at the professional level, but our goal is to be as professional as we can about it. Um, I would consider myself a professional musician, I guess, but time management is so hard. It's so hard to put all your eggs in one basket, but I think for what we, our situations are right now, I think we, we're about as professional as we can be. So. And we're having a fucking blast doing it. So, favorite thing about being in the band um, for me is just jamming with my best friends, uh, being able to travel, um, get to pretty much live the celebrity lifestyle a little bit. Um, so, being able to write music and see it go all the way through production and then hitting Spotify, iTunes, I think it's just an incredible process. So, that's my favorite part. My favorite part would probably be, you know, we get these songs released and stuff and we go out on stage and we hear people singing the lyrics. I just think there's no other feeling like that. Like, wow, this random person knows uh, like lyrics that came out of my brain a couple months ago. Um, I'd say my favorite part about being in a band is, um, well, I just think music, in my opinion, is like the coolest hobby you can have. and. Um, I really love music. I'm really definitely pretty passionate about it. And the band really just gives me a good outlet for that, um, for my creativity and um, my love for music. So I don't know. I think uh, specifically I like being with this band because like when we're traveling, like I don't know if I've ever been with another band that's made me laugh like so much. Like, and we just like don't stop laughing <laughs> the entire time. Like I'm pretty sure if it was anyone else, they'd get annoyed as fuck with us. <laughs> it's crazy. Most likely t to lose a guitar. JJ. Yeah, JJ. Yeah, JJ. JJ for sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> JJ's lost like five guitars at this point. I'm feeling a six is going to come up here pretty soon. Um, so if anyone finds those, please contact us. JJ has lost, I think, 20, 25 guitars. <laughs> um, so if you see a guitar on the side of the road, please let us know. We're desperately looking for it. Um, thank you. How many guitars would Jay? Uh, probably, I don't know, right now, probably over 100, I'm guessing. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Lost a guitar? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> don't, touch, I'm, don't touch my guitar, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna lose that shit. You know, I'm hoping it just gives people a chance to, like, 
get to know who we are and um, get to know a little bit about our history as a band and our relationships with each other. And I would want it to be more of like um, just inspiring for maybe any other person who's trying to get into music watching this. Uh, just to let you know like it is possible it's never too late like to learn an instrument even at the very you know infant stages of starting a group or just writing songs yourself like it, it's never too late and it is possible and you can do it when you're at school you can do it when you have a full-time job like just just get down to it and it's it's all about finding something you love to do and just trying to execute in the best way you can and hey if you want a good laugh too I mean I hope you get a good laugh from this yeah yeah You can go